Hey there, ACCA financial management students. In this video, I'm going to help you pass your upcoming exam. I'm Steve Willis. I'm going to show you how to construct a money market hedge quickly and efficiently. So let's jump in and get started. I've got question Newton open on my screen. This is a classic. You can find it in most of your revision kits from the approved publishers. If you don't have the question, you can find it by clicking on the link below. I recommend at this point, pause the video, try as much of this as you can, then come back and we will do it together. Okay, welcome back. Our objective is to calculate the expected sterling receipts in three months using the money market hedge and we'll compare this then to the forward contract that the bank would give us and we will recommend which one we should use. We are dealing with this line, the three month receipts of $300. What I always do when I am doing any foreign exchange hedging question, I will draw a T account to represent my balance sheet. And we have to identify what is our home or our base currency. And we are UK. That is our home or base currency. This dollar could be any country's dollars, doesn't have to be a US dollar, is the counter currency. Let's understand what the risk is. Our balance sheet then is in sterling. And we have a $300,000 receivable. This is transaction risk, so we are worried that the FX rate will change between issuing that invoice and the settlement from our customers. The FX rate could change. When we use the forward contract with the bank, that's the easier hedging tool. We go to the bank, we meet with our banker or we do it online and we get a guaranteed exchange rate at a point in the future, turning that into some British pound receivable. And our risk is gone. We know that we will get a set amount of British pounds in the future. The more difficult tool is the money market hedge. We are going to construct the hedge ourselves using short term borrowing and depositing at our commercial bank. And when we construct the money market hedge, what we will do, we will create a corresponding liability in the dollars. How do we make a liability? Well, we have to borrow some dollars. We will then convert it into British pounds. And now on our balance sheet, we have the asset and we have the liability. Those cancel each other out. And we are left then with an asset in British pounds. That is what we do when we construct the money market hedge for the receivable. Now, let's just imagine if it were a payable, if we had to pay $300, it would look like this. We would have a $300 liability on our balance sheet, and we would then need to construct the asset. So $300 on deposit, I would get that by borrowing British some amount of British pounds converting it at the spot rate, and then depositing it. Again, those two cancel each other out, and I'm left with the liability. But we're not doing that. We are hedging the receipts. So let's put it back how it was. We are expecting $300 in the future. I will then borrow $300 from the bank. I will convert it at spot rate. I will put it on deposit where it is earning interest, and in exactly three months, I would withdraw this money, 
the receipts would pay off the loan. Let's now deal with the exchange rate that we need to use. We will need to convert the money that we borrow at the spot rate right here. And they give us the spot rate with a spread. So we should calculate the low and the high. And if we do that, we see that it is 1.7818 and 1.7822. We have a high and we have a low. Let's recognize that this is a direct quote. We're talking about the amount of dollars for one pound. This can be a bit confusing in these questions, depending on where you live. You're, you might be used to thinking in the indirect uh, approach. Here in Czech Republic, in Central Europe, where I live, all of the exchange houses and the banks work in the indirect. They use an indirect quote. They tell us how many Czech crowns are equal to one dollar or one euro. How do we decide which rate to use? Well, we just have to remember that the bank will always win in the transaction. And I like to do a simple test. If I'm in the exam hall and I'm stressed out, I'm in a rush, I just do a very quick test. And I write down the FX rate as it is in the question, dollars per pound. So the numerator is dollars, the denominator is pound. And then I just set it equal to a low number, let's say one, and a high number, let's say two. In three months, I will be entering the bank with money and I want to convert it into British pounds. Let's imagine it's $10. So I put $10 here. If the exchange rate was one, I would get 10 pounds. If the exchange rate was two, I would only get five pounds. So of course, I would prefer the low, but the bank, unfortunately, they're going to profit from the transaction. They will give us the high. That will, so we've identified we will use the higher of the two rates when we convert the dollars to pounds. Now that we understand what we need to do and what exchange rate the bank will give us, let's quickly construct the hedge. I will do this. I will make a column on the right for three months. I will make a column on the left for now. I will make a row for dollars. I will make a row for pounds. In three months' time, we need to owe the bank $300,000. And because we are borrowing for three months, we need to adjust that interest rate for a partial year. Using a little bit of algebra, I will now work this out. That would be 1 plus 0 0.054 multiplied by 3 over 12. That's going to come to 1.0135. Now, if we solve for x, we can arrive at the amount of money we need to borrow today in dollars, which is 296004. I will then deposit that money in pounds. Before I can do that, I need to convert those dollars to pounds, and we established it would be at the higher of the two spot rates, 1.7822. So if I divide my dollars by that exchange rate, I will come to 166. 089. That's the amount of British pounds that I have in my pocket today. And I will then deposit that at 4.6% annual interest rate. And if we look at that in terms of month, it would be 1.046 multiplied by 3 over 12, 
that comes to 1.0115. And in three months, my British pounds will grow to 167999. That is the figure I am looking for, calculating the expected sterling receipts in three months using the money market hedge. 167999. Let's compare that to what we'd receive if we used the three month forward contract. And again, the bank would give us the higher of the two FX rates which would be 17850. And all we have to do is divide the $300,000 by that exchange rate, 1.7850, and we get 168067. Because it's a receivable, we like the higher amount. Therefore, we would go with the forward contract from the bank. Friends, there you have it. That's the money market hedge. I hope that helped. Guys, good luck on your upcoming FM exam. If you found this little tutorial useful, please throw down a like and subscribe. That will help me out. Guys, this is Steve signing out. Good luck on your upcoming FM exam.